A very good morning to one and all present here. On behalf of the Entrepreneurship Development Cell of St. Xavier's College, Autonomous School, Kata, I would like to thank everyone for being present here today. It's my honor and absolute privilege to extend a warm welcome to a highly experienced individual present among us here today. So, has won various laurels such as the most promising business leader, personality of the year, and LinkedIn's top voice in India for two consecutive years. We present to you Mr. Tapan Singhal, the MD and CEO of Bajaj Alliance General Insurance as our guest speaker for today's session. Armed with an arsenal of knowledge and unparalleled level of business building and acumen, sir is truly a force to be reckoned with. Sir has a, has a rich experience in the insurance industry with more than 30 years of experience. He has been associated with Bajaj Alliance General Insurance for over 20 years and has been serving as the com company's MD and CEO for close to 10 years. We are beyond thrilled to have you join us, sir and are extremely thankful to you for taking time to conduct a session with us from your busy schedule. On behalf of everyone at TDC, I wish all the attendees of this session a great time of learning. Thank you. So, thank you very much, Pranjay. I think uh, uh, it's my honor to be here. Let me make it very clear. I love to interact with young, brilliant minds. It gives a lot of insight of how you think, how the future of India no, would unfold. And especially Calcutta has been a weakness. I grew up in the city of uh, Joy. You know, my uh, early childhood was spent there, staying in Calcutta, La Martina, and St. Xavier's used to be a close competition to us at all points of time. So obviously, the love for Xavier is still there. And so when I got this opportunity, I said, wow, well, I'd be there to talk about it. Now, for all of you, I think there are two, three things which is interesting no, for me and then try to uh, see how do I put it together. One is that if you look uh, at me from a... Uh, education perspective or degrees perspective. No? I'm a master's in science, especially in laser spectroscopy. And I want to be a scientist. No? So that is my entire uh, focus. I'll tell you why and what. And I ended up in business and um, in a kind of a startup also by Alliance. So as a founding employee of this company, build this company from scratch to what it is today. No? Uh, completely different from what you'd expect. No? So I'm neither an MBA nor did I plan to be in business. I just want to be a scientist. I think that was my only ambition in life. And this is where I am. So that's an interesting journey. So I'm not a regular businessman or no, armed with degrees. So my story of being a CEO would actually you know, get some of you to understand that. The second is story of my company. If I look at Bajalian Generations Company, we set this company up in the year uh, 2001. That was the time when government allowed you know, private players to come in. Before that, it was uh, government regulated. Uh, in just about 20 years' time, the entire capital put in this company is about 257 crores. And the last money that we put in the company was in the year 2007. Today, as panelists, we are not listed. If we sell this company, we will close 80,000 crores. You know? So you hear a lot of unicorns, you hear a lot of you know, uh, billions get created. But a lot of times you forget that even companies like an insurance company, you know, just 20 years back was a startup. We started from garages, actually. I'll, I'll talk a bit about that story also. Interesting for all of you since entrepreneurship. So the entire capital, just 257 crores. That's it. And uh, today, as I said, if I sell this company, about 80,000 crores is what the company would be valued at. With 12 crore customers, that means every one in four household, and I'm very sure that most of you in your house, you find out, you'll have a Bajalian's policy. So nearly in every household of India, one in four household of India, definitely, uh, we would be there no? with this kind of huge base. Organically built, one of the massive distribution that we have created. You know, I don't think uh, any other company in the world would have as many bank partners that we have. Any bank that you bank up uh, would be our corporate agent in all probability. You know? Or any car you go to buy, any dealership, they would be our corporate agent. Uh, or if you look at a strong force over 100,000 agents, it would be there, which is there. This is all built organically, not a single acquisition, built brick by brick. And the last capital we took was 2007, which means of 14, 15 years, not infused a single rupee to the company. And it is the one of the most valued. And as for some analysts, if you list ourselves, we'll be the most valued insurance company, general insurance company in India. You know? That is how. Uh, we would be if we go for listing. You know? Now, the other point which comes is if you uh, uh, look at it you know, in, in a sense that uh, building this company obviously has been a sheer joy for me personally and for all my people who have been uh, close to me. So I'll talk a bit about our uh, interesting stories about building this company. And I'll talk about a bit about my uh, career you know, and then my learning that if somebody has to become a CEO very fast or somebody has to start a company, you no. Know, what would be that you would face as you progress? I hope you know this is what you'd guy like to hear more and more relevant to you. So let me talk about why I want to become a scientist first. Uh, I grew up in Calcutta, you know, and my father was in the uh, police uh, services. And in the evening, we would go for a walk. As a small child with my dad, you know, 
And, uh, you know, C.V. Raman, Jadapur University, he got the Nobel Prize. And my father talked a lot about, no, and the Nobel Prize and what Mr. Raman did in spectroscopy and, no, and what was his work on that. And that influenced me as a child very much. So my ambition in life was to uh, get the Nobel Prize for my country. So I said, I'll want to become a scientist. You know, if I become a scientist, I'll be able to get uh, the Nobel Prize for my country. As a child, that is what my uh, thinking was. So the first lesson for all of you, because right now you are college students and uh, I think um, hopefully in the near future, you guys will get married. And then in some near near future, you'll have kids. The influence that parents have on kids is big. Remember the story of mine. Whatever you talk to your child, the child will know slowly in his mind or her mind, make up as to what he or she wants to do. So I had a huge influence of my you know, father talking to me on evening walks. We didn't have uh, television then. Television came in character in the year 1976. I remember it was a big black, uh, uh, black, white, and uh, black TV. And everybody would come into our house, you know, even, and it is like, you no, know, I remember Lala Amarnath. He would be uh, there, you know, then the first railroad chairman. They, they were all, because that, those days, this community feeling was very high. I, Calcutta still has that. You know, and uh, we would all you know, watch um, television together. But before that, it was not there. So the entertainment would be a walk with that. Even when you have Netflix and television, never, never let go of a walk with the family. That's the first lesson if I have to talk about from very early on in my life. Remember this very clearly. Don't get too carried away by television, Netflix. When you get home, you had a dinner, take your kid out for a walk or your spouse out for a walk. 15 minutes, do that. It has a big lasting effect on my life and personality it has. Second, one of the journalists asked me, how, how do you define your personality and how does it get shaped? I said, the cities I lived in has a big influence on my personality. A lot of people don't look at it. So cities that you live in will leave you know, uh, their marks on you. I grew up in Calcutta. I did my education on BHU, Banaras. Banaras is the place where I belong to. So the two cities, which are very, very uh, unique in their own way, has a huge influence on me. Banaras for the spiritualism part and Calcutta for understanding humanity and love you know, for people. I do not know how Calcutta is now, but in my time, if you were a lady and you would say, you no, know, ladies, the bus would stop in the middle of the road and the lady could get down wherever you know, she wanted. And the moment a lady would get up in the bus, 100%, somebody would get immediately to offer the seat to the lady. You know, that was the Calcutta I grew up in. I don't know how the Calcutta is now, but the respect for ladies was such immense and the community feeling of being in a society together was such immense. I never saw that in any city. So that has a big impact on my thinking you know, as I grew up to be a professional. The second lesson is that the cities you grow up in will leave a huge impact in you. So absorb the city and the sand city very well. It plays a big role in your personality. <laughs> now, moving forward, um, I was... Um, uh, my joint college did my MSA in physics, uh, especially in laser spectroscopy, taught my class, was going to US for my uh, research. <clears throat> One of my friends put in some forms. In my time, getting a job was not easy. So you had to apply for jobs in which lakhs of people sat for competition and a couple of hundred would get selected. No? So people would actually aspire for IAS or a bank provisioning officer, insurance double O. These are all government jobs, class one officer jobs. That means the best in class jobs would be these. So my friends bought in form. They all, you know, trying to appear for the exams. So he got an extra form. He said, why don't you fill this up? I said, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm very clear. I want to be a scientist. I want to get the Nobel Prize for my country. He said, no, no, just fill it up. It's, it, let's say it's an IQ test. Not like you mug up and you top the class kind of stuff. So I said, okay, if you challenge me, so. So I filled up the form and I you know, gave the exam. And I, I, I was on the top in that exam in the All India basis. And they said, at such a young age, you're becoming a class one officer. No, for the government. So why don't you just take this job? You don't like it. You may you may go to states who's stopping you. So I thought, yeah, that's not a bad deal. And my first posting was in Mumbai. Mumbai for a young kid, you no, know, who has been in Calcutta and Banaras in those days, goes to Mumbai all alone. It was a very exotic city. Believe me, I had a great time. I was getting paid to do nothing, you no, know, within training, and I was getting free food, free stay in the best of locations, you no. Know. And I was so amazed. I said, wow, this is life. No, I'm already getting paid. I have a good job. And, and okay, T, let me try this job for some time. This looks very, very exciting. You know? And that is how I stuck on uh, into a job which I never wanted to, never planned, never studied for, you know, and got into <clears throat> the job. And as a direct officer, we had to be posting C-class cities. So I got posted in a city called Jhansi. That's my first posting after my training. 
when i reached jhansi and i reached and reported to my manager i told him here is my reporting from head office and i have come to join so my manager told me i i do not know what to do with you you know and i said yeah that's very interesting i also have no clue what to do here look but it's perfectly fine he said okay sit down since you are an officer you have a cabin so you go and sit in your cabin you know, we will let you know so sometime he calls me and says you are a divisional accountant and i was shocked and i said okay now divisional accountant matlab i have no clue what accounts <laughs> scientific education never saw debit credit and i became the divisional accountant you know and, uh, and and then i became the boss of all these people who have been doing accounts for so many years my head accountant was 45 years of age then you know and i was like you know in the early 20s and uh, an entire team and i became boss of a team in which i had no clue about what to do and so but i, I just protested a bit i said but i do not know accounts we don't care the direct officer so you no know, you have to handle all roles so i go and sit in my cabin and after about an hour or so my head for um, accounts uh, comes up and offers his leave application and we are close to the annual closing you know and um, it's a government job so he is entitled for leaves and leave in cashment and he puts a, a letter for me that he wants to go on leave now imagine you are a young officer you are the general accountant and you have no clue about accounts and your head accountant wants to go on leave and this is your first job now the idea was that he wanted to <clears throat> negotiate uh, maybe overtime with me you no know? because if i say no to leave he'll say oh i have this difficulty and then negotiate overtime bonuses or whatever you no know, would be there and he knew that now sakar is a boss who has no clue about accounts so his negotiation um, hand would be much higher than you no know, it would be for me so i sat there now uh, some of you are you no know, who can answer this question i can see some of you what would you do in this situation would you approve the leave or do you intend to negotiation anyway just think yeah you are in my shoes and now no, that's why a lot of time when i ask this question in an open forum 99% people say negotiation yeah yuvraj also no mentioned negotiation. i think that's what uh, say people say so i think that's more sensible thing to do no but i have always been very uh, irrational and unsensible i accepted the leave uh so i just signed and i said okay thank you all the best enjoy your leave and just don't worry about the office we'll take care have fun great time take care <laughs> so after 10 minutes of my acceptance of leave my boss calls me into his cabin and says mr singhil you accepted the leave i said yes uh, i think i have the right to accept leave as as the boss for this guy he says yes but do you know uh, accounts how stupid and how foolish can you be that's what my boss told me from his perspective was right you know what happens to the closing of the accounts it is not going to happen now and then he'll be in deep trouble because he is the overall boss so i said so let me if you allow me let me say something he said yes as a sir first and foremost on the stupidity part let me just clarify i have no clue on accounts and you made me the general accountant so who stupid is already established <laughs> let us not get into that discussion don't try it no because you understand from my perspective i want to be a scientist huh? so i was just doing a job for the sake of no spending some time so i can do all this stunt huh? don't you don't go and try it with your bosses no? this kind of stunt that i did so stupidly established uh, and now let it be no let me see what i can do matlab once i have accepted it's my responsibility and we didn't have computers then you remember it was manual days you had ledgers huge ledgers no and you had to fill in sub ledgers no trial balances no um, general ledgers and vouchers uh, it was all manual I went inside my cabin and I did nothing. I just sat down, had water, had no good uh, lunch, and strolled around. No, and and the entire office is watching me. Okay, this joker, what is he up to now? No, <laughs> he's not even doing anything. Like not even started working. Also, evening five o'clock, the office used to shut. So at just five to five, I called up my peon and as government officer, we had uh, peons there. Dinesh, I still remember his name. I said, Dinesh, do me a favor. You wait for some time. He said, Okay, sir. what do you want to do i said you take out all the documents that was required no by the accountants to fill and put it on the table no ahead of me the fill documents no and serially put it like what was the first document which was entered the second the third the fourth the fifth put it on the table and then on top of it put tabled on the documents uh, which are the empty documents no and 
where does this document get filled by? What what is the document that is used to fill this? They bought in yellow watches, white watches, and the peons are the best people in the office. They know exactly what's happening. So when you become officers and you run companies, uh, be very good friends with the water boys and peons. That's one of the big lessons that you will learn. A lot of people ignore that. They'll tell you everything about the company that you do not know about. No, every individual, every bit of it, all good information does not come from your head HR. It comes from the water boy and the peon. They'll tell you the pulse of the company. And they'll tell you very honestly. The drivers, the water boy, peon. This is the second, a third lesson I want you guys to learn. So when you become big officers, never, never, no, you may <laughs> get angry with anybody. Treat these people with a lot of respect, a lot of love. And I promise you, the information net will be very strong and your decision will be much better. So they, they actually know everything. Yeah? She said, sir, isko aise bharte, isko aise bharte. I said, rakte ja, no, Dinesh, let us try and no, work on it. <clears throat> so as you would guide me, so the water boy and the peon are guiding me how to fill in you know, the vouchers and put it together. And I go ahead filling it up, filling it up until I think we had dinner together, all three of us. <clears throat> Next day again, I'd come in the office. You know, and then in the day, I would just go out Try and meet other accountants from different uh, companies, no? Uh, so I've tried to make friends with them, take them out for lunch, understand, no, how things would be. Bought some books on accountancy. And the evening, we'd do the same thing. Our three of us get down, again, take our documents, put it together, start entering. And over three, four days, I got some good friends who were my accountant to guide me, you know, how it has to be done. And I think in about 25 days, I finalized my first trial balance. And I was the first in the country to submit, you no, know, the trial balance. From that day till this date, no CFO has been able to bluff me on numbers, data, and what balance sheet is all about. You know? So I think the other lesson that you guys learn is that when you are faced with you know, a situation which sounds very dangerous and you don't get to understand as to what to do in that, uh, you know, and you want to really you know, make it big in life, um, go ahead, take it head on. You know? You'll find solutions. It's not difficult. Now, if you think about it, what is the difficulty? It's a new town. I did not know anybody, but obviously there are a lot of people. I just walk into people, ask who's the head accountant here, meet them, you know, take them out for lunch, you know, uh, to spend time in the evening with my P1 and water boys, you know, to figure out you no know, documentation, buy some books, learn about it. So a lot of people ask me this question when I tell people that you can do any job you know, in any company and it doesn't matter that if you have majored in sales or you no, know, that you become a sales guy. Uh, so I have in my company examples of a cashier becoming head for you no know, uh, sales and um, distribution. I have an example of a technical person becoming the chief distribution officer of my company. So a lot of people ask me that, don't you feel afraid of giving opportunity to people who have no clue about you no know, the subject to do so? And in open town, I ask only one question, which I'll ask all of you also because you're still studying. That let's say when you do a, any kind of degree course, let's say an engineer, you no know, four years course. So in the four years course, I did how many... Uh, days did you actually study? So, I don't know. My, you guys seem very studious to me, always serious guys, no? But uh, in my time, I love the most studious guy who study a month before the exam, no? 11 months, they'll be having fun, no? The most studious guy, yeah? And people like me who study one night before the exam and fail, yeah? So, so uh, which actually means that for uh, four years, um, the best guy who study for four months and, and, and people like me who study for, let's say, two weeks, put together four years, you know. So in three, four months, you can actually grasp the whole four-year subject and become an engineer. In a job, can't you spend two, three months in becoming, you know, what do you want to become? Like, So this, again, is a big lesson. Never get stereotyped. Ke cha, I've become an HR now, of course, since all my life, I'll be HR, you no? Know? I've become an accountant now, all my life, I've been an accountant. I've been a sales guy, all my life, I've become a sales guy. You guys want to make it big, never be stereotyped. Never hesitate. And don't worry about what you have learned. In three, four months, you'll get the full hang of it. My experience is in one and a half years, you actually become an expert. No, six months is struggle, but then you become an expert. In one and a half years' time, you really deliver very good. So I'll come to those points later. Then one day, my boss called me again and said that you are the head for legal. So I said, Legal? No, madam. You mean the legal means lawyer, kind of legal? Yeah, talks about law. So yeah, yeah, you head for legal. I said, Are you sure? <laughs> You want me to head legal? I have no clue about law. Honestly, I, I, I've never seen a court in my life. I've never done anything which required me to go to the police or court. Like, no, though my father was in the police services, but I never know. Are you sure? He said, yeah, you are the legal head now. So please go. He said, okay, thank you. And what about accounts? He said, no, that's fine. Now we have, we have got somebody else to look into accounts. He said, okay, that's okay. No problem. So I come out and then I see this guy. How many of you have taken loans and not paid? So 
matlab if you you all seem to be a decent good guy so you must be paying your loans in time if you have taken if you take loans and don't pay then uh, the lender has the right to go to court and um, uh, go against you to recover from your assets and there's somebody called a kur kamin appointed by the court to uh, come and auction your goods so when i step out of my boss's office there is this kur kamin standing and asking who is the legal head here <laughs> and then every is pointing to me here is the legal head huh? so i said yes sir what can i do for you he said i am the kur kamin i've come to uh, close your office uh, close all the um, accounts and auction all the stuff here i said that sounds interesting but what have i done that you want to do this well, no no there was a court case in which the company had to pay you know x amount of money and the company is not paid so obviously you know uh, there's an order from the court that we should auction your stuff to pay that money off i said yeah that's that's pretty interesting so then i took him out i said sir ek cheez samjhao aapko i become the legal head just 30 seconds back well, i have no clue let me have some time well, if you do this then the next thing they'll say is that no when they send a report to head office they say that uh, the court has come with an order to auction the goods and the legal head of this place is mr tapan singh <laughs> can you imagine you know that's the report will go to head office so huh? 30 seconds back i become the legal head so i said i have no clue sir and some of that guy was a nice guy he said acha theek hai main aata hu 15 20 din mein tab to dekh lijiye humne let me let me try sir the massive pile of files i remember it was huge you know with all random orders and uh, summons and all kept you no know? it was the person who was handling that he had a mishap in the family there was a suicide and he had been absconding you no know, for some time so nothing was actually happening so it was all uh, you know kept like that i said okay no worry let's let's handle this so obviously we handled that case and company was rich with funds so there no problem of funds we paid you uh, know the claim i started going to court and standing uh, ws went through all the supreme court judgments and all the judgments is there to understand law legal etc you know and about an year or so i was a legal head and again till date uh, on the law part of it no uh, nobody can fool me to tell uh, how to handle the legal aspects or how to look at court or how to you know uh, take decision which should be there because <clears throat> understanding legal contracts should become very essential for you as you either become an entrepreneur or become officers in both the cases so understanding to read legal contracts understanding the law understanding what are the judgments is something that all of you will learn either by choice or you'll be forced to learn because of the nature of your job you no know? so remember that very clearly so that also helped me a lot so now you see because of my lovely boss who put me in difficult circumstances i was learning things like amazing i i learned finance you no know, though i did not do an mba i learned law you no know, though which is not there and then i became head for it so in my time as head for it now you guys would be actually be surprised <clears throat> when you see you know like i'm speaking on a system in my hotel and we go through in earlier times computers would be in two double doors how many of you have seen that i'm not sure anyone has seen that the computer would be kept behind two doors in air conditioned environment you take your shoes outside no dust could enter uh, wear a different slipper and that get into one door second door enter the computer room and then you had a massive server and and the desktop did not have a hard disk you had to put a floppy it was called a floppy i don't even know if you guys know a floppy now and and then you had to that was a bootable floppy which would boot the system then you put another floppy in which you would program and run the program it was before you had windows coming also you had dos you know those time and uh, and i became the head fighter i had no clue about it honestly so i entered the double door and the head so i entered and sat down before a fancy looking system and i started no typing something just this idea nahi tha so no let's say so my head for programmer comes to me and says that um, sir matlab i would uh, give you a small advice as a please tell me but it touch the keyboard lightly so it'll break you no know? like imagine how humiliated i'd feel like you're the head boy and your programmer can tell us touch the keyboard lightly it'll break up huh? so i just get up from there again as usual no feeling very lost uh, what do i do now in the evening when i'm on the way to home i, I see this aptek and net you no know, boards you no know, there were the computer institutes that come through i walk in one of them and said do you have evening classes they said yes we have so what time can you come i said i can come from 7 to 10 said, okay so i joined evening classes for computer i assembled my own computer and i became very good in dbs fox pro c++ you no know, all the thing that you see 
and I could uh, design. In fact, the first website of my company was designed. By Those days, one page of website would cost twenty thousand rupees. You'd be laughing at it. Now kids can you know, put up websites now. You know? And uh, <clears throat> I became the best uh, IT head. You know, that was there. But obviously, it took me six months of intense uh, learning and setting up company. And those days, I was not getting paid very high. So assembling a computer by buying small parts, putting it together, you no, know, at home, and, and did that. So kind of long story short, from there, I became head for claims. I became head for underwriting, and then head for marketing, and and then finally I uh, became a branch head. <clears throat> That's the time. Uh, Ninety one, I started my job. Two thousand one, ten years. Um, no, and 10 years, I already handled seven assignments, you know, all different, if you see that. Uh, private companies came in, and I was doing very good by the time. Uh, the company recognized me a lot, and I had a lot of uh, advantages. I was staying in Bangalore, and a lot of people, and I had risen up, you know, uh, the career. Uh, private companies came in, and they started, they had to look, obviously, from government companies for talent. Otherwise, where they get talent from, for certain insurance companies. So you had Tata with AIG, you had uh, Bajaj with Allianz. You had Difco Cripco with Tokyo. You had Reliance on its own. Then you had uh, ICICI with Lombard, uh, SDFC with Chubb, later on with Argo. <clears throat> so a lot of these companies, you know, all the big names of the international markets, they came to Indian markets. And, and uh, people you know, started moving towards private. So <clears throat> a lot of these companies called me also. I said, no, I'm very happy doing what I am. So I don't want to join a private company. Then one of my friends joined uh, Buddha Alliance and uh, uh, he was from my same company. And, uh, once he said, uh, looks like you're afraid mm, to join a private company. You're too comfortable in your job that you're doing. Now, you, you saw how from scientists I joined you know, the insurance industry. Just somebody challenged me and I landed here. So this was my weakness. So obviously I said, Achha, aisa bola. so next day I'm coming. So next day I went and joined by Alliance as a founding employee of the company. A very, very bold thing to do. And by the time I was married, I had two small daughters. You know? So I went and joined the company. Pune was the head office. Uh, so the then CEO told me, look here, we give you this territory. So like, you no, know, giving different territories. Now you're going to set up the company there. I said, okay, so what do I get? He said, you get a laptop, you get a mobile phone. I said, very good. What else? Nothing, nothing else. So in one month's time, you find the office space that has to be a, like a business center, uh, recruit people, you no, know, and start your um, systems. And then um, if you don't do so, uh, we sack you. Government job, you don't get sacked. yeah. And if you die, your wife gets a job. My wife is an engineer. So she would become a class one officer. That Those were the rules then. If I lived, then I would get pension. And as long as I lived, I would be in a comfortable house, some good uh, places, bungalows. You know? I would have a big office, infrastructure. So in a way, in a government job, then I think I'm losing job. You know? That's like the thing on failing. The only thing is that whether you become the CMD or you don't become CMD, that's the only thing depending on how your career moves. But job is assured. And your family is assured. So imagine I leave that just because somebody told me that you're afraid. I join a company in which I'm given a laptop, mobile, and no office, nothing. Huh? Do, this is your territory. Set it up. Okay. And like no staff also. And then if you can't do it in a month time, then the last slide of the CEO presentation said, even my best friend gets sacked. It was very comforting for me. Huh? Like imagine, no, you enter into a job. And we had no office, nothing. It was just like a startup. No, there you bunch of like, uh, I think 100 of us who, who initially joined the company. <clears throat> and, and all of us, were, some of us given different territories, some were put in head office. And territory means that you go with a laptop and just set up the market. That's it. So I said, okay, I come back to my base um, town and um, I get ready the next day to leave for office. And then I stand at the gate. My wife looks at me and says, okay, what happened now? Uh, I said, nothing. I do not know where to go. You know? And... Uh, then she said something which I never forget. She said, my mother warned me, don't marry this guy. He's, he's pretty you know, foolish in his own way. Today, you proved my mother right. I said, yeah, I think no. <laughs> she, she was pretty right. So, okay, but now I'm already into this. Mother, what do I do now? Let me go and figure that. And she said, hey, yaar, do chode bachche hain. Meri factory thi, wo bhi amlo ne bez diya. No, naukri bhi nahi hai. No, I don't have a job also now. Your job was there, which is going very fine. Now you quit that job. You join a company which you do not know where to go. Mother, it's a very, very interesting situation to be in now. So imagine 10 years from my into my career, uh, I quit a very comfortable job and I move into a job in which I could be sacked in a month's time and there's no office, nothing, not even a bank account. So if I had to run the expenses of that office which I'm going to open, I have to pay from my own salary and take reimbursement from my head office. The account, bank account, we need to with it, no? That, no? It will just, so things will look so simple when you run an office. It's very complicated when you do a startup. So I said, okay, fair enough, no worry. 
so found a small a small office because i couldn't afford a big office a small office means that i would open the shutter on my own start the own uh, my own generator on my own and then start for recruiting people so when i started recruiting people they would be so scared you know they would lose a job so this person who i recruited him a second command then i told him what's your scare is it three years at least minimum if you can no guarantee me a job i said we can't guarantee a job but no no i said do you have faith in me i said i have faith in you but not on the company i said okay if things go wrong for three years whatever existing salary i'll pay you i don't know from where would i have paid him actually it went wrong no but i had to tell him that to start imagine how i'm recruiting people no give personal guarantee for the company to get them on board and and start you no know, my my company in its own way <clears throat> and then i went to clients clients who my new make a beautiful presentation bajaj is so and so hamara bajaj and alliance is the world's largest insurance company and no so many you know trillion dollars and no billion no revenues and all this stuff no they would listen very patiently and they said look here taman we know you respect you but we are sorry you know uh, you have, guys have to establish yourself tomorrow if the company closes and run away you know what happens to us and enron had happened then i don't know if you guys know when enron had happened that was the era so people afraid of mnc's and it was pretty tough uh finally we got a client we sold the policy to and next the client comes and returns the policy said, please give me my money back i said what happened so the bank don't accept your policy i said okay which bank uh, they said um, uh, canara bank i said is it uh, but why should they not we are regulated by iid and iid is given the license so i went to the canara bank uh, zm and said sir no why don't you accept a policy they don't know i have a booklet from iba which just states four companies the government companies we don't have your name there so i said no but we are regulated iid has given the license and no uh, government of india has allowed us well, i don't consider all that i just consider the iba book imagine if your policy is returned your business before it starts closes down no nobody can trust you i had a lot of argument with this person uh, and maybe the guy was right he just didn't know didn't accept what i was saying so after one hour of intense argument i stepped out of his office and before as i was walking down the road i saw the reserve bank of india before me I said, let's insure Reserve Bank of India. You no, know? so I just walked into RBI. I knew nobody. I asked for station establishment, general manager. I went up to his cabin and I said, sir, I want to insure Reserve Bank of India. He looked at me. You know, some very fool early in the morning comes to you and says, I want Reserve <laughs> to insure Reserve Bank of India. He says, that's fine, <laughs> but why would I want to insure with you? you no, know? first explain to me this. I said, no, it's a good point. So, so let's talk about it. Let me talk about my problem. So I told him I have a policy and the your bank, Canara Bank, you no, know, rejects it. you are a regulator you understand this very well and to demonstrate faith in my company i should be able to ensure something which would have faith with the banks and reserve bank of india is the regulator for banks so i thought it's good to ensure reserve bank of india and you understand the regulator so i want to help in this some of you know he was again from calcutta and i could speak bengali i couldn't bolte bari bhalo kore so i spoke bengali i tried all my charms with him and you know some of it worked so he really he said okay so when i understand your case so if you get me a good deal i'll you know help you with it i said don't uh, prepared a good proposal for him <clears throat> and we insured the reserve bank of india and then it became very very viral i went back to canara bank and said if the reserve bank of india can insure no why can't you you know take my policies and obviously started from there but today canara bank is my corporate um, agent if you go to any canara bank branch they sell reliance policies so imagine you know, 20 years back the same bank rejected my policy today they sell my policy to everybody you know which is there i'll tell you one more story and then i'll tell you lessons in being a ceo which will be interesting uh, i asked to hire agents then and and then i tell the agents when you go and do business i always target the biggest in your city you know and in hindi as to say ki jangal mein sher ka shikar karna chahiye khargosh ka nahi sher ka shikar karoge tab naam hoga khargosh ka shikar karoge naam nahi ho to bole sir kaise karenge how will you do it no, just don't worry you find out the biggest customer in the town get me an appointment i'll come and no show you how to close the deal No, uh, young and you make all these bold statements so this um, young uh, uh, national squash champion he was my agent he calls me one day and says sir i've got you the biggest client of the town come down i said they are the biggest carpet exporters of india i said okay uh, when do you want me there we said today evening only so i was about 300 km away i took my car drove down you no know, about 6 7 hours reached there towards the evening went to meet the cfo and sat down before and started again um, and now there are four five you no know, people who joined me you know abhi sir i share ka shikar hoga no so imagine so i have five people with me and i enter the cfo screen all very film me huh? so i enter and i tell the cfo okay i am from so and so this company bajaj so and so hamara bajaj alliance is so and so i tell you to explain the company and then i want to ensure your plant and he said um, 
fair enough, Mr. Singhal. So how much would you charge to insure my plan? And what's the rate? Those days were government regulated. The free pricing happened in 2007. Before that, it was government regulated rates. So it was fixed rate kind of stuff. So I sold him carpet as a rate of 2.50 per million. He started laughing. You can imagine now. The CFO is laughing. And the same people with me, share ka share karne aayin, wahan saamne share has raha hai, you know. <laughs> and you're sitting like a fool before. He laughed a lot. He laughed for about four or five minutes. I never saw anybody laugh so much in my life. And I was just sitting there like a <laughs> fool, you know. When he finished laughing, I asked him, okay, sir, since I've heard enough entertainment, you know, can you tell me? Uh, he said, see, I find it so funny, Mr. Singh. I said, tell me what. Since you come from so far, you give me a rate which is two and a half times what I'm paying currently. So I pay one rupee. You want to charge two and a half times. Now, the premium I place is to the company which is across the road. He showed me the office, no, across the road. That is where it is. And the head there, the divisional manager, he became divisional manager based on a business over time. When I have a claim, he brings me an empty checkbook. I write the amount. I get my claim. And I pay one rupee per million. And I find it so hilarious that somebody who has no office, no presence, no name, comes from 400 kilometers away, offers to do my business two and a half times the rate, and he thinks I'm so stupid, I'm going to give him business, you know, when I already have the structure, which is... <clears throat> okay. Never forget the Sheikha Shikar part, huh? because there are seven people with me. Huh? Sheikha Shikar will be the biggest, the biggest, the biggest, the business, hoga. that's what it is. So I said, okay, fair, sir, now that you have had a good laugh, I'm very happy I will provide entertainment. So may I have a look at a policy copy now? And also, don't forget, I was head for IT for the government companies, you know? So remember that. Remember that how, how dots connect together in life. Huh? So I knew exactly what the policy would be that you'd be having. You know, because he told me the rate which was being charged by this person. So he gave me the policy copy. I said, sir, let's read your policy. It says XYZ corporate uh, exporters, uh, stocks of good covered. And bottom, you had this star, except those in a section one and two. Tariff, that government book of rates, had sections one, two, three, four. So I said, do you know, sir, under section one, what is there? So I took out the tariff. I said, section one has carpet. So let's read your policy. Uh, XYZ carpet exporters, stocks of good covers, except carpet. I said, sir, it's so very interesting. You still pay for, no, one rupee for, no, not covering anything other than carpet you get paid for. So you know, I had a claim they paid. As your claim must have been small, 40, 40, 000 rupees, not over 20 lakh rupees. Said, yeah, it was a small claim. I said, do me a favor. Call up their head office of this company and tell them that you're paying one rupee for carpet. And if they'll pay a claim of one crore and above for you. <clears throat> he said, okay, let me try that. He called up the head office. The office said, no, no, we'll not pay the claim. It is not the rate to pay. I said, sir, you should really thank God that I was here to save your job. If you had a big loss, you claim not even paid. You pulled or sacked you. In fact, put you for no as a CFO for not keeping your company safe. He he really you know was like zapped because the renewal is due now. So he told me, "Okay, Mr. Singh, what do we do now? You don't have an office. I said, don't require an office. You require a survey for a claim. So we'll appoint the survey right now. You no, know? I'll sign it. If a claim happens, just appoint the survey. Second, you don't want to see my face. You want to see the policy copy. I'll give you the policy as you give me the check. So obviously, as he gave the check, I called him my office. They faxed the policy. We got the policy and share ka shikar no." Now that gave a lot of confidence to people. Suddenly, you know, all over the market, we started hitting the big accounts, the big names. We tied up with the, in the year 2002, if any one of you purchased car, Maruti car, no, or your family purchased car, 100% insured by the names. We had tires with the big institutions, all vehicles on the road, 100% insured by the names. 2002, you know, so we made it very big. Then we entered every big account. Uh, did tie-ups with, you know, NTUs, uh, redefined the system. Before uh, 2001, if you had a claim, it take four or five months. We made cash to garages with a company to innovate, bring that <clears throat> and do these tie-ups. Interesting again. So we did this tie-up. Now suddenly claims happen. No? We are automobile, one in three automobile have a claim. So March, we did it. We became the largest insurance company first year. In June, the claim starts coming. And we are still about 100, 200 of us. Huh? And all the policy copy has our numbers. So which means when you reach home at one in the night after working, at three in the night, you get a call suddenly. Sir, my car is fighting. Where are you from? He said, you're standing under the tree, and it's raining. And it's raining. You have no clue where it is, what to do. And the newspapers are screaming that this company you know, has taken more risk and chew. It'll close down. The worst services, worse than government companies, pathetic, useless. All the headlines you know, went against us. 
Now, again, we are stuck in a situation that we actually went really overboard, uh, did a lot of business. My competitors were, peers were not doing these kind of business, establishing offices very sensibly, very slowly. And we had this huge um, influx coming. Uh, then we said, okay, there are two options. Either we accept all the criticism of the newspapers and, and all our peers and our board members and say, no, the company is going to close down. Or we make solutions for it. We said we should hire engineers. We should open offices at a very rapid pace. We should spread our presence across the country at a very high speed. So we're able to service the customers better. So we did this. We hired service engineers, uh, automobile engineers. We made them surveyors. You know? The first time again in the country, we opened a lot of branches all across. So when we opened branches, we set up retail business. We did bank insurance, the first in the country again. The first bank was JNK Bank, which we tied up. Uh, we set up an agency network. In trying to save ourselves from getting finished, we set up a huge network of offices. And because of the network offices, we set up a huge distribution way to make them you know, viable in its own way. And that is what gave Bajaj Alliance what it is today. You know? There are many more stories behind it, but I thought I'll give you a startup part of it. Now you look at it, at every step, the chances of closing down offices or failing was very high. And we used to work from eight in the morning till one in the night every day. Holi, we used to reach office at one in the afternoon. Diwali, we used to reach home at five in the evening. So if, if anyone you want to do a startup and you think that you'll have a nine to five job, forget it. First four to five years of your life will be very, very difficult from your work perspective. But the most pleasurable, enjoyable part of life today, if you ask me what was the best moment of my career, it was those moments, no? When we were setting up the company and working, you no, know, real crazy and doing all this tamasha reserve bank insure no if you look at all the steps it looked very very you no know, audacious you no know, in in that time for a young man who had no clue what business you know setting up you no know, the business at that level and then obviously a lot of innovations a huge amount of innovation that we did over time but i think those stories i can tell you later come to the ceo part of it now <clears throat> so in just about 5 years into the job in in bajaj Alliance, i was slated to be the ceo you no know? i think i already um, Driven, I, by the time I already set up the north part of the market, I set up the eastern Hyderabad, you know, and uh, all the part, you know, central part of India. I was sent to China to set up, you know, Allianz Retail in China. I also handled some projects for bank insurance for Asia Pacific. So in just five, six years time, you know, because of all the results that we could deliver at a very hyper speed and, uh, you know, was already there. So I was ready to become the Indian CEO, just what, and I was pretty young, you know, at that point in time. <clears throat> So first, let me look at why did I get at such a young age slated to become the MD and CEO of one of the best insurance companies by the time you already know, building up very strongly. One was my early story and I told you, when I took up departments and roles, which I had no clue about, but even I had to like learn with evening classes or learn with my friends from different departments, Never hesitated, went ahead, demonstrated, learned that. This played a big role when I joined the private insurance company early on because I knew about nearly all departments, you know, which I had gone through and rotated myself. So I didn't have to depend on anybody else to tell me what and what. I, I had it all, you know, understanding as to how it has to go, what has to happen, what are the laws, regulations, contract, you know, the IT systems, all the admin systems. When I took up the assignment, it was again very unnerving because after a very balanced work, secure, I moved to a very uncharted territory in which my job was at stake. And I was already married, had two young daughters, so I don't know what would happen if I lose my job. That to a circumstance in which every third day I'd feel that, no, this, this office will close down. Like right, right, banks not accepting your policies, the police not accepting your cover notes, no. Um, to setting up a distribution network, which we could not manage because of our infrastructure being very small, to be able to respond to it at a very hyper speed with a lot of innovation on the way because we had to really automate very, very fast and get it on. So the next lesson is that even in uncharted, challenging environment, even when you're beaten down and on your knees, you still think, what next? You just can't give up. You give up, the story gets over. No? Then people are talking about the failure of Bajaj Alliance and what are the lessons from the failure of Bajaj Alliance. Today, they're not talking about success of Bajaj Alliance. No? The story gets over. As an individual, when your boss feels 
who can handle it the most today i feel if i when i told you story maybe you felt my boss was you know very very difficult and like the satan of the world no but if you look at it he may actually be feeling that this is the only guy who can bail him out you no know? he would have huge trust in me that's why he kept on giving me different assignments which he could have given to anybody else like what was he maybe setting a failure maybe he was having so much faith on me i did not ask him the question but today i think he had faith in me when your boss is giving you an assignment which looks very very difficult and set up a failures if you take them head on then you become the problem solver for the organization you become the man or the lady to go when the company is in a crisis and as you bring the company out of crisis just two or three of these stunts you get zoomed up to the cxo level and you become the md and ceo in waiting now let's say if i played safe if i did not do any of this i don't have been there no already there to become the md and ceo no of the company <clears throat> now i'm already there and i'm and the star right now and no all all the laurels around me international exposure rated as you know one of the best upcoming future leaders and all the stuff you know you start getting that and then when it's very clear that i'll become the md and ceo in fact i had enough indications the name is announced is not mine and then i'm told that since you're very young we thought we'll know get somebody who's older than you, you know to become and i said yeah that sounds fair enough you know i have no hurry let me know continue after two two and a half years again the chance comes up for me to become the md and ceo this time again i have very strong indications and then the name announces somebody else and now i start getting calls from everywhere else you no know, from competitors and so would you like to be md and ceo of this company and you no know, i start getting job offers and a lot of my people start calling me and sir sir aap kab banoge md and ceo you know so in my very difficult circumstances from a career perspective you are stated to be you already there uh, people already told you and then you miss it and then you get offers you know to become the md and ceo of your competitive company then you then you get people asking me so i decide i'm still young if i have to be md and ceo i'll be of this company only which they told me join the company in this company ceo my own it's a very popular statement of mine and i said there no hurry so then when people ask me kab banoge i would say i don't know when i'll become the md and ceo this company i promise you one thing the day i'll become the best md and ceo that the country has seen no of an insurance company <clears throat> that's what i said and then i got back i said okay let me figure out what more i have to know make myself better because there's one i don't know how many of you uh, listen to shairis now in my time those was entertainment so there's one very popular shairi um khud ko kar bulan itna so you no know, i think have you heard that yeah, i can see some of you nodding ahead no ki <clears throat> it just say that make you so powerful that before any decision on your life god himself or herself ask you what do you want so you become so powerful that even god for deciding destiny has to ask you okay tell me now what do you want so that's what your destiny shall be no and that's an urdu shayari which goes in those lines so i said okay let me know figure out what more should i do so i, I started working much more harder and made myself no more pop in terms of relationship building networking in terms of no building up distribution understanding more innovation looking at the world what's happening picking the best practices looking at projects international projects no and then no looking at no even european projects still a lot of projects on insurance no and that couple of years i built up a very different skill set which i had not built up no while is building up the company and then i became md and ceo 10 years back you know of this company and and then obviously we had a very good dream run uh, as i said in my worst year of my worst quarter performance my market share of profit in the industry is over 50% so find me a company which for 10 years in the worst performance has a 50% market share of the industry profit grows the uh, market share pie and also grows the customer base and i have the largest customer acquisition now so continuously for 10 years like we are talking how many quarters now 40 quarters yeah. so we're not talking about like one or two quarters that we do that continuously for every quarter we did that now. and that's why you hear all these awards that no uh, national transfer awards that i got <clears throat> so the lesson that you have to learn and understand from here is that if you want to be something in get them never be afraid whether you know you do not know when you are beaten down figure out ways to solve the problem and get back to it I'm running short of time now already 11:57 so i think I'll close my talk because this is my passion i can talk on a company for ages and hours together i'll take any questions that comes from all of you over to you guys oh hi so what what it was a very fun session so i enjoyed a lot and learned a lot uh so before we break into question there's one person question from my side so you mentioned that uh, one shyly inspired you 
and while you were becoming so can we hear that shairi so from me khud ko agar buland itna wala aur which one you want there many of it khud ko kar i want any one of you to speak out no i want to see how many of you know that like it's a very popular shairi most of you would be knowing it in anyone so there's a prize as what do i give you as a prize no these are real prizes now let's talk about do you guys go to movie now or you don't go to movies now uh, don't go to movies now no i think that would be stuck but dinners do you guys go out or don't go for dinners okay then let's say it's a 500 rupees uh, uh, flip card voucher now let's start with that so this will be for the person who who, who, who tells the shairi please raise your hand and speak out let's see who gets it right okay so we have already put on class siddharth yeah So that's over to you for five rupees of Flipkart watches. So the shairi goes like, "Khudi ko kar buland itna ke har takdeer se pehle khuda bande se khud puche bata teri raza kya hai." Yeah, very close to it, no? But I think since you got the complete intent right, anybody else wants to attempt at it, or we go with what Siddharth has said? Okay, so Siddharth, you win this um, thing. So I'll ask my team, no, to do who is quarantining with my team. So Siddharth gets a five rupees, you know, flip card voucher from my side. So it's pretty easy when you have a discussion with me, you get rewarded immediately, you know. So good, Siddharth. So that is it, you no, know, from which is there. So it just talks about this. Yes. Okay, uh, sir. So, uh, uh, YouTube have a question for you, sir. Since you have been an accounting, a legal head, a IT head, a branch manager. So which experience did you enjoy the most, and which experience did you learn from? The- It's a it's again a good question, Sidhar. So I think it's a let me tell you about how I led my life, and maybe that can be a lesson. All of us lead our lives very differently. So for me, if you see it, no, I never wanted to be a CEO. I never wanted to run a company. I wanted to get the Nobel Prize in my country. That was my, my ambition. No. So as life unfolded, if you actually watched my entire story, I just took life as it came. So it is not that something that I was no. And a lot of us should be very careful. I think you guys are doing very brilliant. You are in some of the best institutions of the country, and no, you are all brilliant minds, and you are already there. The problem I see with brilliant minds is that you are so obsessed about your outcomes or what you want from life that you forget to enjoy the pleasures of living a life. You know. So I was lucky because I had no outcome in my mind. कि मुझे ये बनना ये करना है, you know. And the outcome I had that left way behind. I actually took life as it came, and every moment, be it difficult, be it good, be it happy, I was fully involved in it. So for me, every even till date, now I'm 55 years of age. You no, know, I still travel 20 days a month. I still you no know, uh, set up you no know, businesses, run the company, meet a lot of people. Uh, you know, if you look at um, you no, know, be it LinkedIn, social media, you no, know, I've been in top voice there as you saw. For me, everything, every moment is highly pleasurable. I want to be super excited to learn something new, to build something new. You no. Know? and do so so the lesson that you guys should have is don't get too obsessed about no what you want to be where you want to be whatever jobs you get or what you want to do no just go and do it and till you into it it will have its difficulty aisa nahi hoga subah niklo gaya no people naach gana ho raha hoga music baj raha hoga na saab aage saab aage aisa nahi hoga the moment you enter you will enter a lot of difficulty you enter a lot of pressures on you to be able to smile it through figure out solutions to be able to no um, Deliver the best output in adverse circumstances will make you whatever you wanted to be in much beyond. I never thought I'll be getting this kind of you no know, remuneration, salary, designation, position, or what. Never. I never thought I'd be getting this kind of you no know, remuneration, salary, designation, position, or what. Never. I never thought I'd be getting this kind of you no know, remuneration, salary, designation, position, or what. Never. I never thought I'd be getting this kind of you no know, remuneration, salary, designation, position, or what. Never. I never thought I'd be getting this kind of you know remuneration, salary, designation, position, or what. Never. I never thought I'd be getting this kind of you know remuneration, salary, designation, position, or what. Never. I never thought I'd be getting this kind of you know remuneration, salary, designation, position, or what. Never. I never thought I'd be getting this kind of you know remuneration, salary, designation, position, or what. Never. I never thought I'd be getting this kind of you know remuneration, salary, designation, position, or what. Never. I never thought I'd be getting this kind of you know remuneration, salary, Uh, had a very powerful impact no always you know or buland karna i do not blame anybody politics hai usne kharab kiya mai saath isne kharab kiya it has no relevance no people will be people no they will always do it beat organization beat family beat friends you will always have this kind of no uh, people around where there will be politics and that don't get involved in any of this you make yourself powerful every day and you enjoy the process rest whatever you have dreamt for you self in your life i promise you guys you will get that very easily but you promise me to be very focused And love what you do, and not get no out when you're beaten. Just see the three things, girl. And जो भी सपने देखे तो पूरा हो सकता है. It's so simple. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring words. So we have another question. Yeah. So, like, so generally these days we do not get such opportunities, and like companies are insisting on hiring people who specialize in a particular field. Hmm. So, what are your views on that? 
I completely disagree with these companies. I think you know a lot of people still follow that, but at individual level, I feel that when I recruit, and a lot of my company people, you see, at least seventy, eighty percent of them are recruited by me personally. I recruit all of them. So the only thing when I should look into the person was how one is. I should try and judge from his personality, like how, like what is personality like? Now is the person going to be? And my interviews are pretty tough in a way. I put the person in a lot of crisis situation in the ten minutes time, no, by asking you no know, difficult questions or you no, know, putting the person on spot, and then I observe the reaction of the person. That in a difficult circumstances, how does the person do? Does he lie? Does he want to get away from it? Does he accept it? Does he find solutions? No, that's one test I do, which which should come through. Anyone who want to do it and do it right now, also to demonstrate how it happens. No, in ten minutes time, you'll be in such huge pressure just by my conversation that you will either give me a statement which is a lie or a bluff, or you will try to find a escape route, or you will take it head on. The more you take it head on, and you're able to find solutions or give an answer, no, which is genuine, honest. No, that's the first thing you you pass the first test. The second test I look for is how hungry are you to really you know make a difference to society to people. No. What are your values and ethics, and how do you fit on that? And third is, can you still smile at the end of it all? You know, so after interview, I tell people, please forgive me, I didn't want to put in this trouble, but that's the process I go through. But if you pass these three basic things, you are in. I don't care, you know, uh, what um, degrees you have. So in three four months, you'll learn what has to be learned. If your attitude is right, and the basics is right, you'll get it there. You know, that's the way I would look at it. But obviously, from an HR perspective, it's very safe to take, you know. Uh, from uh, from skill set from because for them then no what happens is that day zero the person is supposed to deliver and they've got the right person I think they make a mistake there I think uh, skill set and all is important but not the most important. Uh, so again, I'd like to ask another question. Yeah. Uh, so, do you think that holding the position of a chief executive officer of the company has compromised your innovative and creative side? Now it all asks my team. I still continue doing so, and I'll tell you how I do that. Good question again. I love the question you guys ask me. So what happens as you climb the ivory tower? You have two options, and a lot of people fall for this. One option is that you will have some people who will talk very nice to you. You know, ये सर आप महान हो मतलब ये God's gift to mankind मतलब ना आप पैदा हो गए तो ना दुनिया बदल गई ना. So you'll have all these people around you who will know tell you this stuff. वाले सर आपने तो बहुत ही कमाल कर दिया. Human tendency is to love people who flatter you. All of you would be doing that. The easiest way to manipulate a human being is to flatter the human being. Remember the statement. Don't try it. I don't want to teach you guys manipulation. But any time you actually think it through, when you have manipulated somebody, it is only when you flattered the person. And even the other person knows you are flattering, they still love it. Okay. And that will also go for all the dating things. So if any boy and girl you see somebody is trying to know flatter it too, but be careful. Eh? Person is trying to manipulate you. flattery has its own problem so when you rising up the ivory tower you should never never allow this to get to your head because then your arrogance your flattery is going to be the reason for your downfall and study history and watch history very carefully all the leaders who went down the major reason was they start believing that the god's gift to mankind never believe that that's the first lesson but obviously you should have all people of us listen to everybody but don't get carried away Second thing you should do is always be on the ground. I told you I travel twenty days in a month. Why do I do so? So let's say I, I talk to my team and we say we should do this, and they're very careful of me because they know the next moment, you no, know, he is going to be on the ground, and then he's going to come back to me and say, "Hey, the bath was done. It has not yet got implemented. Something is seriously wrong." No, so one, you will have all the feedback from the ground. Third is when you when you want to be an innovator, what you guys should do is read a lot and read random things. So all of you heard about data lake, no? All that stuff. Now those are fancy words, data lake, machine learning. You have all heard about it. So for the human brain, is also a data lake. It's a very powerful data lake, and a lot of machine learning. When you feed this with a lot of random information, that's why for me, I've never, I, I don't remember when I watched television last. I, I don't remember if I ever saw Netflix. I, I don't even remember, no? I watched a movie when, no? I didn't get time also, but read a lot. Information. I love to listen. Like I talk to all of you. I love to think and see how you're thinking. Put it in your brain. Now, when you see a problem statement, your data lake triggers, you know, and you start thinking of solutions which are very different from people who think because they are too tuned to thinking of solutions which consultants give them, and the consultant will give the same solution to ten guys. You want to be innovator. You want to be entrepreneur. Be a voracious reader 
of random stuff. And also think of problem statement that you want to solve and love to solve it. You'll always be innovating. It doesn't matter whether you're MDNC or you are no, a water boy. That's the only attribute. So I'm very cautious of these two things. I don't allow myself to be carried away by factory. And second, I don't allow myself to be away from the ground. No, I still do that. And that is where the innovation keeps on happening. I have a question for you. Yeah, please. Uh, as you said in your career, you, sta you started in Bajaj from the scratch and then you went on to become, became, become the MD and CEO. So yeah. in this corporate ladder, uh, what role does networking play? The corporate networking, which we talk about now nowadays, what <laughs> importance does that have? Yeah, so you're asking the question of the wrong person. I did not do any networking. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'll tell you why it is relevant also because I don't think I should only tell what, what, what worked for me. What worked for me was, if you listen to my story, I took up challenges nobody wanted to take. I took assignments which was too dangerous to, people thought it will fail. You know? And I became a success. So every assignment of mine, I turned it around. And that's how I climbed the corporate data because it was on high delivery and nobody wanted to take the assignment. So that to me was an easier task you know, to take it up. On networking, I'll tell you one story and then I'll tell you my view on networking and then what is the right thing that you guys should do. So it's but from my personal view. When very early on in my career, I used to see that I used to work really hard. And this friend of mine, he would actually go out for this evening, um, you know, uh, whiskey, tea, you know, and dinners with all the senior colleagues. And he would also be getting rated well. And you know, obviously his networking was working. <clears throat> and I would actually really struggle for my ratings and it really worked very hard. So one day I thought, this is an easy life, bhaiya. Subha se aata hum, raat tak kaam karta hum. This guy hardly works for a couple of hours. And then he's, no, having a gala time. Every time he's having a good, no, fun time, drinking, eating, and he's getting also a good rating. I said, let me try this, my love. There's no harm in this. So then I fixed up, no, got my seniors, no, uh, took them out for dinner and, no, got some, no, uh, good uh, whiskey, wine flowing. That day I could not sleep uh, when I reached home. I felt very uncomfortable myself. No, I said, no, I, I cannot do this. I, I felt very uncomfortable myself. Then I made a personal choice that for me, networking doesn't seem to be my personality trait. It gets me very uncomfortable. For me, the personality trait is to work hard, to innovate, to push boundaries, you know, to be in the market and to really deliver something which people feel is impossible. You know? And I'll give you this impossible story some other time in economy. That will be another story. I've done a lot of things people felt was impossible. Like some I told you, like you know, the Reserve Bank and other things. But today it looks easy, but those days people are hoi sakta. And I became what I became. So there are two extremes. This guy, a friend of mine, was only networking, not working. That's one extreme. That will not get you anywhere. Because he today is not where he, he would be. Today, when I look back to he's like half of where I am. You know? So that did not get him where. Uh, my story also is a difficult one. Where every time you have to succeed, you know? if you fail once, your story is out because you have nobody to back you up. You know? So this is again a, one of the extreme stories. There are two extreme stories. One pure networking does not get him there. One is my story in which every time to succeed. So it's like, no, chances of error is zero. In between is the right balance for you know, most of us. You should network, but at the same time, not let go of your hard work. These two combinations will take you there. But if the networking is the cost of your ethics, values, and principles, don't network. Don't go to sleep being uncomfortable. So, zindagi to mili hai, khush rehne ke bhai, malab. Do rupay ke chakkar mein apne neet kyun kharaf kar. Never do that. No. Baki sab milega. Then go by, by my way. Once you feel uncomfortable, some people don't feel uncomfortable. They're fine with it. So let them do. Every then never judge anybody. Just because I have a personal way of looking at things does not mean the other way of looking at things is wrong. It's perfectly right. I never judge anybody. But you figure out what's right for you. And the way to figure out when you go to sleep, do you feel comfortable? If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. There are hundreds of ways to reach to where you want to reach, and each way is right. No, but it depends on your comfort level of what you do. So that's my answer to your question on networking. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we'll come to the last question for the session yeah. now. So, yeah. sir, if you would get an opportunity to go back in time and become a scientist, would you take that opportunity? Oh, yeah, that's a very dangerous question. That's my childhood ambition. Nobel Prize will get So I can still do that. A lot of times people ask me, well, how did you and how would you do all this, what you did? I said, it's because of my scientist went of mine. Everything to me has to be challenged question. No, I think that is what really helped my, grew my thinking. A lot, but that is something. So when somebody gets a Nobel Prize, I feel very happy. Bachpan is sapna hai, no? And Bachpan is sapna. You heard that song, no? Which became viral, no? Kya Bachpan ka pyar? What was that song? No? Okay, uh, Flipkart watch a fine piece. Who can sing that song? That Bachpan ka, what was that? Who, who will take this on? 
Okay, Sakshi, over to you. Let's hear you. We can't hear Sakshi, you're on mute. Yeah. Sorry. Jane, Jane, my bachpan ka pya, mera bhool nahi jana re. Mera pya. You win that voucher, Sakshi. So, ye bachpan pya novel pa ispana bhai. How can I bhool jao? So, that would be there. I do not know what I'd do again, but obviously I, I, I still have that. Because somehow I felt that for my country, the least I can do is. But you know how I've transformed myself in thinking. I was always upset I'll do something in my country. So I had a lot of opportunities to head you know, Asia. I had opportunity to move to global head position. I did not do so. That's why I'm in the country for a long time. Successful uh, leaders move on to international exposures. You no, know? I did work projects and all. So people ask me, why did you not take this opportunity to move on? I say, I, I believe the professional made a difference to my country. We have seen the uh, health scheme for, you know, and you look at interviews, you'll see much before that's pushing for the health scheme. A health scheme across the country would increase the life expectancy of Indians by five years. We don't realize that, no? Today, a farmer has a five lakh cover. And that means even big names like Apollo and all are started moving to the semi-urban places, which they could not earlier because of the demand and supply. I'm pushing a parametric today with the government. I'm also the chairman for National you know, Commission on CIA. I'm also the advisor to, you know, uh, chairman idea. I have many other roles to play. I believe the profession, I can still make a difference to my country. Somehow the love for my country was very immense and that is what, no, I continue to do. So I, I still feel I make a difference in millions of lives, no, by being a professional. So remember this, whenever you become professional, you rise, you corporate, you buy your big vehicles, big bungalows and big holidays abroad and all you do, you would toss and all this fancy stuff you want to buy, you get all that. But never forget your contribution to society, to your, your country, to your people, you no, know, should be in all that you do. Uh, so that's it. So that's my Bachpan Kapka. So good. Thank you. Sir. You really sang well. Then. <laughs> this Thank you, sir. Yes. Okay. Just one thing. The two, uh, the lady and gentleman who won this, no, I'll ask my, uh, whoever's calling you in the office, uh, I'll ask you guys to send the name. So we'll send that voucher. Please send it to them from my side. And thank you for your patience, listening and time. I really enjoyed being with all of you. Thank you very much. So with your permission, uh, we can now break for vote up. Thanks. I would uh, ask, yeah, uh, ask Shreyash to Kanya. After such a motivating session, it is an absolute honor and my pleasant duty to propose the vote of thanks today on behalf of the Entrepreneurship Development Cell of St. Xavier's College, Kolkata. With immense appreciation and gratitude, I thank Mr. Tapan Singhal for being present with us today. Your knowledge and expertise enlightened us and gave us valuable food for thought during today's session. We learned a lot from our experience and are extremely grateful for your insights. A special mention to respected Reverend Father Dominic Savio and Vice Principals Reverend Father Joseph Pulandai and Reverend Father Peter Arokiam for encouraging us to pursue greatness and live up to the great Zavayan reputation. I would further like to thank our faculty advisor, Dr. Arup Kumar Mitra, for his leading supervision and inspiration at every point of time in college. Last but not the least, uh, I would extend a deep sense of appreciation for all the support, timely implementation, and guidance provided by the members of the Entrepreneurship Development Cell. We owe the success of the session to you. Once again, thank you all for tuning in with EDC. Have a pleasant day. Thank you all. Bye. <laughs>